we have already seen how to find the solution of a discrete dynamic system. It looks awkward. Fortunately, it's possible to express the solution in a nicer looking formula. But be aware, the law of conservation of misery applies. So the solution will look a lot nicer, but not really beautiful. Let us see how nice we can get the solution in this video. So let us summarize the problem first. We have xk plus 1 equals a times xk, xk equals a to the power k times x0, and that looks bad. But if you have eigenvectors, it all looks a bit nicer. If you have, we know a times v equals lambda times v, so we know a squared times v equals a times a times v, but a times v equals lambda times v, so we get a lambda times v. And we do again a times v, we get another factor of lambda, so a squared times v yields lambda squared times v. Well, then you know, of course, what happens if you continue like this, you get additional factors of lambda. So a to the power k times v yields lambda to the power k times v. So if our initial condition would be some eigenvector of a, then a to the power k times x naught is easy. However, our initial condition probably won't be an eigenvector. That would be too nice, wouldn't it? So what can we do then? Well, we can express our initial condition as a linear combination of eigenvectors of A. So we find uh, weights C1 up to Cn and we express x0 in terms of V1 until Vn using the weights C1 up to Cn. And then we get xk equals e a to the power k times this linear combination. However, now we are much happier because if you work out the brackets, we get a C1 times a to the power k times v1, but now v1 is an eigenvector, so we get a lambda 1 to the power k times v1, and it holds similarly for all the other terms. So uh, we get a c2 times lambda 2 to the power k times v2, etc., etc., until the last one. And so, as I said, it looks a bit nicer here, but not really much nicer. It's still kind of a mess, because conservation of misery applies. Well, if you have only two vectors here, it's a bit better. Like we had with our lions and zebras, we had the 2 by 2 matrix, A equals P, D, P inverse, P and D given, Suppose I want to express xk as a function of k when I have some x0 given. Well, we can use this formula over here. First, I need to express x0 in terms of the eigenvectors of a. So I have 3, 1, and 1, 2 as eigenvectors. So I have expre to express x0 in terms of 3, 1, and 1, 2. What weights do we need? Well. You can use row reduction, or you can use an inverse matrix, or whatever you want. Or you can see it directly that we need C1 equals 2 and C2 equals 3. 2 times 3 yields 6, plus 3 times 1 equals 9, 2 plus 6 equals 8. So C1 equals 2 and C2 equals 3 will do the job. And now we can compute xk in terms of the initial condition, 2 and 3, and in terms of the eigenvectors and the eigenvalues. We know xk equals c1 lambda 1 to the power k v1 plus c2 lambda 2 to the power k v2. c1 lambda 1 to the power k v1 plus c2 lambda 2 to the power k c2. So what does this formula tell us? Well, for example, it tells us the behavior, what happens if k goes to, goes to infinity, for, so for long times. If k, k goes to infinity, the 1 half to the power k will become very small, so eventually this term will drop out, the second term will be dominant, so the uh, population beha will behave like this. So we see, we, we see 
uh, both populations are growing if you start at this point in a uh, and for every three lions we will have six zebras so that's a nice result however small warning if you have only this formula you do not know whether during this trajectory somewhere you entered a region where one of the two would be negative and then the whole model doesn't apply anymore you can see that from the phase space you cannot see it too well from a formula like this so when you're studying dynamical systems always also draw the phase space